second lecture nervous tissue devoted to nervous fibers and terminals. Nervous fibers are processes of neurons they call axial cylinder. They may be axons or dendrites covered with glial chest are formed by Schwann cells or lymphocytes. There are two types of nervous fibers myelinated and unmyelinated. Myelinated contain one axial cylinder, one processes of neuron covered by melon chest. Unmelanated contain many axial cylinder and no melon chest. To understand the structure of melanated fiber, let's see its development in embryogenesis. Cross section. This is the axial cylinder, Schwann cell. Axial cylinder invaginate the cytolemma of Schwann cell and embedded supporting on duplicature of Schwann cell membrane called mesoxone. Then mesoxone membrane should grow in and rotate around axial cylinder and nucleus and cytoplasm of Schwann cell push to the periphery. This is development of melanated nerve fiber at longitudinal section. You see the line of Schwann cells and axial cylinder invaginate the of all Schwann cells and after that every Schwann cell produce the melon chest. The regions between Schwann cells contain no myelin and all the nodes of Ranvier are part of no fiber between two nodes of Ranvier called inter nodal segment. It segments developed by one Schwann cell. This is transfer section of melanated nerve fiber at the scheme and electron microphotogram. Axial cylinder in the center and around the melan chest You see many double membranes of lymphocyte cell membrane. Do you see mesoxones? Inner mesoxone here and outer mesoxone here. And the, at the periphery, you see the nucleus of Schwann cell and cytoplasm. Cytoplasm of Schwann cell there. Melanated nerve fiber in longitudinal section at scheme and under electron microscope. You see the axial cylinder in the center and around the melon chest. Here it's turned black and between Schwann cells, you see the node of Ranvier. No melon chest here, but processes of neighboring Schwann cells cover this place. Then in addition, around the basal membrane located. There is also incisions of melon, incisions of Schmidt-Lantermann. Gaps 
of melon chest. The remnants of cytoplasm of Schwann cells, which not stained by osmium. These are uh, incisions of Schmidt Lanterman in melon chest. This is a melanated knife fiber under light microscope. The light axial cylinders in the center and dark brown melon chest around. And there are knots of Ranvier in knife fibers and incisions of melin chest look like small defects of melin under a light microscope. Melinated nerve fibers can conduct nerve impulses with a very high speed up to 120 meters per second. Pulses jump from one uh, run via to another and wave of depolarization jumping from one to next, next, next node of run via. Unmelanated nerve fiber line of lemocytes you see the oval shaped blue nuclei and inside lemocytes, pink stained axial cylinders, processes of nerve cells located and in this schematic drawing you see the development of unmelanated nerve fibers, Schwann cells uh, axial cylinders invaginate Schwann cell cytolemma nucleus of Schwann cell still be in the center this is the electron microphotogram of unmelanated nerve fibers in the center of unmelanated nerve fibers located the nucleus of Schwann cell and at the periphery many axial cylinders embedded in cytoplasm of Schwann cell and supporting them by duplicature by a mesoxon from Schwann cell cytolemma mesoxons another and melanated nerve fiber, the third one, and between uh, loose connective tissue of endoneurum and these points are collagen fibrils in transverse section. Now everybody know that if destroys the pericoron, the cell body the nerve cell died and will not replaced by a new one because no stem cambial cells for neurons yeah. in adult human nerve tissue. But uh, what happened after injury of nerve fiber? Peripheral part completely destroyed, phagocyted by macrophages and uh, Schwann cells start to proliferate intensively and produce the line of Schwann cell. The central part of nerve fiber partly destroyed but then activated and axial cylinder milling chest around nerve terminal recover skeletal muscle fiber also recover all nervous fibers have nerve terminals at the end 
by their function and location they can be divided into receptors, effectors and developed by axons of effector neurons and synapses between neurons interneuronal synapses synapses are communicative junctions between neurons morphological classification by their location they may be axodendritic between axon and dendrite axosomatic between axon and cell body of neuron and axo-axonal between axon and axon of another neuron. This is a re reconstruction in 3D of synapses under the neuron's body on the dendrites much much more synapses. Every synapse interneuronal synapse consists of prosynaptic part, extension of axon, postsynaptic part, extension of dendrite, usual den dendritic spine, this is prosynaptic, this is postsynaptic membrane, and between the synaptic cleft. In prosynaptic part in axon, there are many synaptic vesicles contain mediator. This picture demonstrates the synapses under low, middle and high magnification and in schematic drawing prosynaptic part the extension of uh, axon contain organelles synaptic vesicles with mediator inside this is a prosynaptic and postsynaptic membrane. This is a synaptic cleft between. Postsynaptic membrane contain specific receptors to this mediator. And then the nerve impulses come in. The way for depolarization opens the calcium channels in prosynaptic membrane, release calcium, and it initiate the release of mediator by synaptic vesicles. Mediator diffuse through the synaptic cleft and connected specifically these receptors to mediate in postsynaptic membrane. It initiates the conformational changes in receptors and sodium canals open and wave of depolarization appeared and finally postsynaptic neurons change its function. It activates or depressed inhibit by those impulses. For next transmission necessary that mediator very quickly should be removed from the cleft and receptors to mediator became empty, free and waiting for next portion of mediator. How the transmitter disappeared? It destroyed by special enzymes available here in postsynaptic membrane as well as reuptake 
by prosynaptic portion. The new mediator fill in the synaptic vesicles and synapse prepared to the next nerve impulse. This is the axodendritic synapse. Under electron microscope there is a dendrite and two axons, the synaptic vesicles and organelles. And this is synaptic cleft where uh, vesicles where mediator will release. Synapses can be classified by the nature of their transmitter, like new neurons itself, holinergic if mediator is still colline, aminergic mediator biogenic amide, peptidergic mediator neuropeptides, GABAergic mediator gamma aminobutyric acid. You can recognize the nature of mediator on the shape and size of synaptic vesicles. Effector nerve terminals or effectors can be motor and secretory. This scan electron microphotogram demonstrates the nerve fiber and nerve terminal at striated skeletal muscle fiber. This is a schematic drawing of neuromuscular junction. Neuron body, axon, myelinated axon, and nerve terminal on skeletal muscle fiber. This is schematic drawing and a real electron microphotogram. On the schematic drawing, you see the axon, which lost the LNHS branching and invaginate sarcolemma of skeletal muscle fiber. So this is prosynaptic membrane synaptic vesicles and sarcolemma is postsynaptic membrane it contains cholinoreceptors again acetylcholine is a mediator and between there is synaptic cleft where it's acetylcholine will be released You see the axial cylinder, prosynaptic part, extension of axon with mitochondria and synaptic vesicles in branching and invaginate sarcolemma. This is sarcolemma. This is a sarcoplasma and nucleus of myosin plast. And this is synaptic cleft where it's still colline will be released. Motor nerve terminals in smooth muscle and in glands much more easier to organize. They contain no special synapses. It's like a local extensions of axons where mediator will release in intercellular space and exciting the big group of muscle or glandular secretory cells at the same time to activate or inhibit their functions. Usually these neurons belong to autonomic nerve system. Receptor nerve terminals, maybe extra receptors, get information from environment, they usually located in skin, 
and interoreceptors located in connective tissue, in inner organs, in muscles. And depending on the specific sensitivity of receptor, they may be mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors, receptors sensitive to chemical effects, photoreceptors to light, thermoreceptors to temperature. Receptors may be free and not free, encapsulated and non-encapsulated. In the picture you see the free nerve terminal and this is non-free encapsulated contain the connective tissue capsule around the dendrite of sensory neurons terminals this encapsulated corpuscle or lamellated corpuscle of Fatal Pacini accepts pressure. This is schematic organization of that. In the middle the dendrite of sensory neuron around many layers of connective tissue, connective tissue membranes this fluid between scopuscles located in the deep part of the skin and in the inner organ and they accept pressure. Under pressure these lamellas move and this pressure conveys through the uh, fluid to the special sensory glial cells they activate it excite it and this excitation accepted by nerve terminal then right of sensory neuron and convey to the central nervous system for analysis Another important type of encapsulated receptor are Messner corpuscles, which are located in uh, papillas of dermis, just under epidermis of skin. This corpuscle covered by active tissue membrane which connected by uh, fibers to basal membrane and epidermis and inside branching of dendrite of sensory neurons covered by special glial cells sensitive to touching skin or hairs. There are also muscle spindles, receptors of skeletal muscle, accepting the changes of the muscle fibers tension. Tendon organ receptors in tendons. In conclusion, Morphological basis for nerve system functions are reflex arches. There are the chains of neurons connected by synapses. Reflex arch start with receptors, then impulse going on the dendrite of sensor neuron body, then axon intermediate neuron then effector neuron and its axon finished by effector the simple reflex arch consists of two neurons 
receptor and effector and more complicated consists of three neurons but there are much more complicated complex reflex arches arches which contain many interneurons especially in uh, the central nervous system and brain basic principles of the neuronal theory the functional and structural units of the nervous tissue and nervous system are neurons neurons interact through the synapses neurons compose the reflex arches excitation in nerve arches convey only in one direction from receptor to effector <laughs>